In this video, we're gonna look at how to fine tune a GPT model with Node.js and JavaScript, and we're gonna do it in just a few minutes, actually. So this is gonna be somewhat of a quick tutorial, but it's something that I think is valuable because when I first started looking into GPT-3 and ChatGPT and all this stuff, I realized that there are some limitations around you know, new information, but also a lot of niche information. So if you wanna train your model on your documentation or your API or, or anything that really isn't part of that data set, this is how you add it. And I thought it would be very complicated, but in, in reality, it wasn't that complicated. So I'm hoping to break this down and make it super easy for you to understand. And this is really gonna be following along also with my blog post called Supercharge Your GPT Model on my Substack. It's natter.substack.com. If you wanna follow along, all of the code is there. The only prerequisites that you're going to need are going to be to have Python and Node.js installed, as well as an OpenAI API key, which you can get at openai uh, platform.openai.com. Um, down here, you'll see API keys. And with that API key, you should be ready to go. So with that being said, I'm gonna get started writing some code by creating an empty directory, and we're gonna start writing some JavaScript. So I'm gonna create a directory called GPT app or something like that. And then here we're gonna say npm init dash dash y, which is going to initialize a new um, package.json. Then we're gonna open this up in our text editor. And this is going to be where we write all of our code for our app. And in the package.json, we're gonna make one small modification here. We're going to set the type as module. So we want to use ES modules and that will allow us to do imports. So with that being said, we want to go ahead and set our open AI API key. Now I already have this set as an environment variable um, and you can set it yourself by just typing this in to your uh, terminal and then setting the key. And then during that session, you will have it available to you. Or you can set it somewhere more permanent like in a bash RC or a, ZH, uh, a ZSHRC file or something like that. So the first thing we want to do now is install the OpenAI JavaScript package, and that will give us the APIs to talk to the actual uh, service. And then you also need to install the OpenAI uh, CLI, and you do that with pip, which you should have if you have Python installed, and then you should be able to type in OpenAI and see that you have all of this stuff available to you. And, the, and you also are gonna be installing this OpenAI data lib, which is gonna be something we use for data transformations. So we're done with that setup part. Now we want to look at how we're gonna train the data. Now, the way that you do this is that you have this prompt and then you have a completion. The prompt is like the question and the completion is the answer. Or the prompt would be you know, the declaration of the information and the, the completion would be the um, response for that or however you wanna think about that. And a good way, for you to figure out like what some of this might look like is just to actually go here to GPT and just ask it that question. So I, I asked it that and I was like, um, what are some good examples of training data in JSON-L format? And JSON-L is basically the format which we need to have it in and we'll talk about that more in, uh, later, but it's kind of like a JSON type of format, but you kind of separate each individual piece of data in a new line. So um, this actually gave me a really good response if you want to kind of understand this a little better. And this is kind of what that data model will look like where we save this and this is gonna be our training data. So for, uh, for us, you know, you can do whatever you want, but for this example, I was looking at training GPT for the Lens Protocol documentation. So I kind of have a lot of uh, uh, example like responses and information there that that's what I'm gonna be using. So uh, your data could be whatever you want, but uh, the training data I'm gonna be using for this tutorial is gonna be that. And in addition to the tutorial here, I also have a GitHub repository that I that is linked in, into this um, blog post, but I'll also link it to this video that has the training data that we're gonna probably use and I will go ahead and uh, just take a look at that. This is that data.json-l. So uh, having that 
data is going to be what you need to kind of get ready for the next steps. And the, the file would basically look like this, where you just have like an object with a key and a value for prompt and a key and a value for completion. And then uh, each individual new line would kind of have a new set of data. Now, it's recommended to have like 500 or more pieces of data to get a good actual like machine learning AI type of like, you know, thing going on here with good information coming back. With mine, I only have like 18 lines, but you're gonna notice that even with 18 lines, at least it kind of works and it's good for this tutorial, but I don't have, I didn't have enough time to kind of do a lot more information yet. So just keep in mind that we're gonna get some response back, but it's not gonna be perfect. But if we did actually add that 500 lines or more of information, it would work a lot better. And if you look around, I even saw a GitHub repo that someone created that allows you to kind of like feed an entire GitHub repo into a tool that spits out JSONL. So look around, you'll see some cool stuff that's out there. So um, what I'll do is I will just copy everything here and I will create a file called data.jsonl. And I will go ahead and just paste all of this there. And now we have our data. Okay, so with that, we can go ahead and save that. And now we have the next step where we're gonna actually use this OpenAI tool to format this data a little bit even better because um, there's a few nuances between the way it is now versus the way that OpenAI likes it to be. And we don't really have to, to worry about doing that ourselves manually. We can just go to our command line and say, data.jsonl with this uh, OpenAI tools fine-tuned prepare data. And I'll just accept all of these prompts. And what you'll see when this is done is going to be this data uh, data prepare.jsonl. So we have all of that prepared and this is gonna be the file that we upload for our training data. So we have our training data ready to go. Now we want to have the API to interact with it. So I'm gonna create this API interface at api.js. So I'm gonna create a file called api.js. And I'll go ahead and paste this code here. And we're gonna import the configuration and open AI API, uh, APIs from OpenAI. We're going to reference the API key in a, in a variable by getting the process.env.openai key. We're gonna create a configuration variable calling new configuration, passing in the API key. And then we're gonna call a new instance of OpenAI API passing in that configuration. And we're just exporting this OpenAI variable so we can import it into our uh, all the files where we're actually calling the service. So here we're just like declaring the API and then we can use this API variable to interact. So now that we have the AI, the API ready to go, the first thing we need to do is upload the file. So I'm gonna create a file called uploadfile.js. And here I'm going to have the A OpenAI API, we're gonna import the file system. And in this upload function, we're gonna call openai.createfile and we're gonna call, uh, we're gonna pass in the data prepared.jsonl, which is right here and we're gonna pass in fine tune as the second argument. And then we're gonna log out this file ID, which is gonna be very important for us because we're gonna to need to use that file ID to train our DaVinci model, which is gonna be kind of the base model we start off with. So let's go ahead and try this out and see if it works. To do that, I can just call node upload file.js. And there we go, we have our file ID. And this is the file ID we need to reference in the next step. So I'm gonna actually create like a new window so we don't lose that file ID. And I'm gonna go back to the tutorial and we're going to create the fine tune. And to do that, we're gonna create a file called createfinetune.js. And here we're gonna um, you know, import our, our API again. And the API call that we're gonna make here is openai.createfinetune. And here we need to pass in the file ID, which is gonna be this. 
and then we're going to pass in as a second argument the model we're starting with. Now we're just starting with the basic Da Vinci model, but you can continue to train existing models that you've custom created. So when we when we train this, we're going to get our new model back. You could then pass that model in here to continue training it. So uh, remember, you're just starting off with one. You can continue to add uh, and modify those uh, in the future as well. And that's really it. So once we create this fine tune, then it will actually start, you know, uh, the process of, of fine tuning with that file. So I can call now this node create fine tune. And we now see that we're creating this fine tune with the status of pending. And what we need to do at this point is kind of like check on the status of this because we want to wait until this has been done and then we want to actually call a completion, which is essentially us testing it out. So to, to check the status, we can call the list fine tunes uh, API. So I'm gonna create a new file called list fine tunes.js. And this is gonna call openai.listfinetunes, so pretty straightforward. And then we're just gonna log that data out and this will be helping us in two ways. First of all, it will tell us when the status is completed. And then once that status is complete, completed, it will actually give us the fine-tuned model ID, which is what we're gonna need to actually call the completion. So with that being said, we'll go back to our uh, tutorial and get our last file. And the last file that we're going to be using is the create completion. So I'm gonna create um, a new file called createscompletion.js. And this is gonna call openai.createcompletion. And then here we're gonna pass in the model name. This is gonna be our custom model name. We don't know what this is yet because our, our model is not completely, is, is still pending, it's not finished uh, training yet. And then the prompt is going to be you know, what we're asking. And again, I told you I'm training this on Lens Protocol Docs. This could be whatever your prompt uh, you know, needs to be, maybe something different. And then you can also pass in optionally the max token. So I'm, I'm using 200 to get like a decent size response back. And then we'll just log out the response there. So before I can call that, we need to go back here and we're gonna call list fine tunes again. And we need to wait here a few moments until this status is complete. All right, now let's check it out and see if it's completed. So we'll run the list fine tunes. And if it is completed, we should see the status succeeded with the fine tune model ID. So we're gonna copy this fine tune model ID and we're gonna go here to create completion. And we're gonna change this to our model save the file and then we're going to go ahead and run this by calling node create completion and this should come back with the response from the openai api and there we go we actually have a response that is somewhat you know decent it says lens protocol is a database protocol based on it's actually not that great but we also didn't feed it a ton of data so let's try it again and just out of curiosity see what this response looks like, if it's any better. So um, here we have an, an effort to map the world's connected lens. The data unleashed will be limited. Uh, not that great, but um, at least it's somewhat having to do with, uh, with lens. And I've seen you know, good and bad come back with this short, small amount of data. But, um, you know, this is in a similar vein of what it does. But I know for sure if you add more data, it's going to, you know, obviously get better results. But anyway, but I guess that's about it. If you want to follow along, uh, definitely check out the written tutorial as well as the GitHub repo. This has everything you need to kind of get started. In fact, you don't even have to write this from scratch. You can just clone this and run it as long as, you, as, as, long as you've set your uh, open AI uh, API key, it should be all good to go. So that's it from this video. Thanks for checking it out. If you like this, be sure to subscribe and like and all that stuff. Thanks.